Welcome to I'd Play That for a Dollar, powered by the World 1-1 Podcast Network. We are the internet's premier budget gaming podcast, where we take a look every week at a game that we got our grubby little mitts on for a dollar or less and let you know if we'd play that for a dollar or if we want our nickel back. Joining me this week are my friends Chris John. Hi. And Todd Oxtra. Hello. And I am, as always, your host, Larry the Bearded Wonder. And Kathy is officially on workman's comp. We did find her in the back of the uh, warehouse. Uh, she was under at least three pallets of hostess snack cakes that fell off the shelf when the forklift operator bumped into the shelf from the other side. It was not pretty. There, there was just, you looked at it and you went, insulin, please. <laughs> Wasn't it wasn't the tracksuit mafia that that found her uh, finding all the uh, all the PS fives and Series X that are hidden in the back warehouse? Yes, because we keep those in the back of the dollar store warehouse. That's right. <laughs> Just a front. Uh huh. That's it. That's where all the scalpers are actually operating out of it's your <laughs> local Dollar General. <laughs> Yo, bro, let's get this going. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so. Let's uh, let's jump in. Who wants first dibs this week? I'll go. All right. So I, see this I, title, I gotta know. Oh my goodness, this is <laughs> I, this is awesome though. I will say this. This is actually I was given this. We we uh, uh, my my co op partner Mark Carabin, uh has a good relationship with a lot of publishers, and he hooked me up with a uh, early access code, which is now fully released for a game called Fire Girl. A hack and splash rescue. Hmm. My goodness, this is by <laughs> Thunderful Publishing. Okay, I'll wait till my uh, very mature co-host co uh, recovers. I didn't realize this was Thunderful though, so I have some faith in this. That's the thing. Yes, uh, the publisher is by. Stuff. Yeah, the publishers did Jima, which I'm not familiar with any other games they've done. But I'll just give you the, the premise. Take on the role of young rescue officer starting her career, armed with a trusty axe and high-pressure fire hose that also acts like a jetpack. Fire Girl responds to emergency calls across the city. Can Fire Girl save all the trapped civilians caught in each blaze? So I will give you my take on this game. This game is a fire rescue roguelike. <laughs> where you have three minutes, three minutes to rescue potentially two to three people. There may be cats that you have to rescue too. You find things. You have the ability to use an axe to move debris. And then you use your, uh, basically your fire hose that you can control and launch and, and shoot out. But it's it but it's runs out of um, water. And that's one of the big mechanics that you have to balance. You find additional water packs and you find additional uh, time Ha uh, packs, as you would call them, as you defeat enemies. So the enemies are like these demonic flames <laughs> in this building, and you're taking them on, and you ha and then you go across, and you will find who you have to rescue. But you have to leave the building in within three minutes. So it's like that last level in like Metroid. You have three minutes to like get out of there, and that's it. But that's the whole premise of this game, and it's in three minute chunks. And you can probably get up to maybe four minutes total if you get enough time. You find it, but man, oh man, the fire gets crazy can you rescue them um and then uh at the end of each level you essentially get money for did you do your job uh you end up getting a fan base depending on how much of a hero you are and then if you die you get a hospital bill and you got to pay it out of your money <laughs> and this you is not the most offensive idea i've heard <laughs> no it's and it's and it's if you if you see the the visuals it's striking it's I, really cool. I'm watching a video right now, and it looks really cool. Like it's really she, cool. She's 2D, but like the yes. rest of the world is 3D. Definitely, and it has like a 16-bit aesthetic, but mm -hmm. it's like that mega at 16-bit, which we get from today's consoles and technology. And um, but like I said, it's a roguelikes because the 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 building changes every time so it's not mm -hmm. always the same the number of people you have to rescue changes um you can go back into the fire uh the fire uh, uh post and then you can buy power-ups with the money you make can improve yourself do all these things it's got a funny little story you know there's some things going on in the background that might be a little corrupt like the fire <laughs> chief might be a little corrupt or anything 
Um, and the cool part was, as I was playing, I'm like, okay, I get it. It's very addictive. The 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 gameplay is very addictive. And then there opens up this part where all of a sudden I'm on a um, call it a like the above like the what is it called in Chicago the above ground uh, like subways, L train whatever you call it. Yes. Sure, yeah. we'll go with that. You end up on one of those, and you have to rescue people on a runaway that's also on fire I, train. And I'm like, where did this come from? So I'm like, I don't know if there's more to it that. But I mean, I'm not good at the game. I've not actually escaped <laughs> the burning building. <laughs> but I'm trying to get money to improve myself and do things like that. But it's it's very charming. It's very fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm I'm staring at it, and I really I'm I'm here for that mixed visual aesthetic thing too. Yeah, like it's really cool. As ridiculous as the title sounds, it looks good. Yeah, hack and splash. I love it. Just like <laughs> they they are embracing what they are. I I'm realizing I have listened to entirely too much Foamy the Squirrel over the last year because I hear hack and splash, and in my head I'm sitting here thinking this is gonna be goofy anime girl <laughs> anime school no, girl game. No. <laughs> no, no, no. That's where that title sounds like it's going. You know, I, I did a search on Steam and that like it was going that route. I could put yes. I, put, I didn't put Fire Girl together. I put Fire Space Girl yes. and it was like a girl like in her bed. And I was like, <laughs> yes. oh, it's one of these games. Oh no, it's not. So yeah. <laughs> Google safe search. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Oh Lord. I, I could get behind this. This yeah. is officially going on my list of things I'm now interested in. Uh. Um, it's $18 on Steam, will not be on consoles until 2022. So it's coming to uh, the other, con for some reason, they just decided to launch on PC first. So, you know, which isn't always a bad idea because, you know, get everything, the, 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 the quirks and everything, all the problems. And then when you get on console, then you have less to worry about. Mm -hmm. tell, tell Mark to get, tell him to get it on Game Pass. I agree. <laughs> uh, we will send some uh, feedback. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so final verdict. Oh yeah, heck yeah! I'd I'd play this for a dollar. I think I'd definitely sign up for yeah. this, even at full price. Honestly, that, that sorry, Nick, back. Good, right? <laughs> Stuff a <it>, Chad. <laughs> Move to Florida, punch a Chad. That's right. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, what you got? Well, uh, this week I played a game. Again, for Amazon Games for free. Uh, it was called Breaks Are for Losers. <laughs> or, uh, well, no, they, they, they go by Baffle, B-A-F-L. B-A-F-L, I just did it. Okay, yeah. And um, it is a top-down, old-school kind of racing game where it's, um, you know, every all the cars are just just, just like this one big map, almost like, a, like looking down on a tabletop. And they're just racing around. And you literally don't have brakes. You're just controlling the car. It The speed is what it is. But, um, yeah, it's it's just a very basic game. Very basic racing game. And um, I got to say, I was actually pretty disappointed with this game. It was... Uh, I, the, the ideas are really cool. Like, there's local co-op. Like, I, could, I, I played it on my computer, so... Like one person can play on one side of the keyboard while I play on the other. So it was like that that kind of old school charm was there. Um, and then, you you know, if you had a controller, you could use you can even use like two people can play on the same controller, too, which is kind of neat. But um, I, I don't know. It was uh, the thing that really bothered me was the fact that like you. Um, if you hit the size of the of the of the uh, race, like the. The road the track like yeah. you get you 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 gain damage like you get hurt like your car gets damaged and eventually it'll yeah. get wrecked so I, I mean it was almost like that in that operation style like you can't touch the sides and all that stuff but and then on top of that they have uh like mario kart style like power-ups and stuff like that that get thrown into the game randomly that you could use but it was i felt pretty empty like the yeah the maps like the tracks changed how they work and operate and all that stuff, but it like it felt I still felt like eh, I don't know if I would I don't know if I'd like to continue playing this game and I didn't. And uh <laughs> this game's like I said, I think I mentioned it, but the game is like ten bucks on Steam. 
um, for their base price. And um, in terms of if I'd like to play this game for a dollar or want my nickel back, um, if today was my last day, I would not be playing this game. So. Oh. <laughs> you know, Chris, I looked at the aesthetic and it almost looks like slot cars. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The track is it's so like slot tiny. Cars. Yeah, the tracks and, are so tiny. It seems like, yeah, that's not really, yeah, it has a different aesthetic. It's the, the, the slot car thing. And then, like, the, the thing is, like, you, I, I, I know I've lost track of my car a lot of times while I was playing the game because I think it's like there's like eight, car, eight cars per race. And you're like, where the heck did my car go? Because like, yeah. it's going all over the place. And um, yeah, yeah, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't fun. It looks like it would be real shallow. Yeah. It like was. even the trailer didn't seem like it had much depth to show. No. Yeah, even the aesthetic is just kind of flat. Mm. Yeah, you you know what that aesthetic looks like? It looks like the race car track printed on like one of the play mat rugs for a kid's room mm, yeah it kind of does <laughs> yeah yeah i always wanted that that rug when i was a kid mm. right like but, what small child didn't want one of those that was awesome it's just, it's like the race car bed it's as deep as that uh rug so, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah that's, uh, that's my that's my game for this week you didn't use my lyrics though, Chris. Oh, I'm funny. sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll say it though. This time I've forgotten. I swear this shit was rotten. This time I believe it because I've seen this shit. I've seen the shit you're needing. So <laughs> that works. What we're needing is a better game, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Todd's over there slaying it with this. Yeah. I got to pick worse games. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go, like, is there, like, reviews within, like, Amazon Gaming cause, <laughs> or any of those? I need to see if there are, because then maybe I can lead myself to, like, how bad could it really be? Well, there All there right. was a, a YouTube, like, you be a YouTube star or something like that game that I just saw. Okay, now you've got me intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is well, there a TikTok star game? Maybe. Oh, God. <laughs> so, I, I got this week one person story and I, I I just grabbed it out of a list of stuff I, I used that price filter I'm like here's a bunch buy so I pulled it up and I'm like we're gonna try this one and one person story is a weirdly uh, indirectly controlled game where it's you're working a little ball through a very simple course. At least it starts simple and it gets a little more not involved or convoluted, but definitely more difficult. And surface level, it doesn't feel like much. But when you stack together the dialogue, it actually delivers really well. Like it's real simple uh, statements that match what's happening and what it's asking you to do on hmm. screen to get your ball from one end of the screen to the other end of the screen. And it's kind of delivering very fundamental life concepts. And it just, they delivered on lining this up so well, I was really impressed in a way I did not expect. Um, it's very basic concept but they do have some points where you definitely hit uh a solid difficulty curve and there's 10 chapters with like 10 levels a piece and each one of these uh, or almost all of these levels not just chapters but each individual level is delivering a essentially a thought and then a a physical manifestation of that thought that really impressed me. Hmm. It's it's all very one button. It's two button at most, really. Like instead of controlling the ball, the ball just kind of autonomously bounces its way through, mm -hmm. and all you have control of to start with is opening and closing red hmm. doors. That's okay. it. And then from there, you get a little bit more, and they kind of they fairly slowly introduce new mechanics, but they all work and 
nothing overwhelms you. It's just you have to take what they're telling you in terms of this is a pertinent lesson in life and apply it. And I was really impressed. And I shouldn't have been for as simple as it was, but I was. I, I was like, oh, damn, this is kind of hitting me a little bit. You know, I mean, everything from the there was one where the little key dots that you need to open a blue gate are outside the level. Like they're outside the corridor and it's a solid wall. And the, the comment was, you know, sometimes some things seem impossible, but they're not with enough persistence. And as you let the ball bounce around, eventually it'll knock on a panel that lights up, you know, a little section of it. You're like, oh, OK, break of a wall. But they're delivering on this concept of, you know, at glance, this looks insurmountable, not doable, because we put what you need outside the the play area. I'm like, well done on your <laughs> like metaphor and they're they're very simple but they're just as important for anybody for everyday life to keep in mind and it's you know these are things that i see a lot of people get very wrapped up in and let these things get to them it's like no sometimes you need that gentle reminder of th this is life these are things that you have to account for and i was really blown away the, cool. This was cool. like the surprise star star for me. So, I mean, it's it's not like gris levels of sweeping, you know, emotional depth, but it's there. So, I would hmm. definitely play this for a dollar, and I'm going to be playing more of it. I got through about 40 to 50 levels, so about halfway through, um, and I, I want to see what's in the, the back half of this game. I was really impressed. They they started getting in some some more tricky gameplay mechanics, like uh, some polarity stuff that feels like they they almost borrowed a little from uh, V V V V V. Mm. Um, it, it just it had little callbacks to things from my my gaming history that made me happy. Uh, oh, what the hell? I don't know if. Uh, any of you remember there was a game where you had the the ball bouncing around and you had to like keep boxing it off into smaller and smaller compartments on pc came stock on your pc and i don't remember what the hell it was called now but oh uh mario yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> very good <laughs> but no this this is a solid winner i picked it up on my switch and if you see it anywhere uh, definitely grab it. it. It can't be more than a couple of dollars full price, but one person's story is well worth the, the voice acting in it is short, but it's not awful. It's, it's assertive, but comforting at the same time, I think. Hmm. So for a game that is that shallow, it's surprisingly deep. How did um, those are the best? Yeah, how is the music in the game? Is there any music in it? There is, but it's very sparse. Okay. Um, which is okay. It they they tied it all together well. Everything they did feels like it fits what they delivered perfectly. Like it's not you know super overbearing, but it's not too minimal. It is dialed in just right. So nice. I would definitely play this for a dollar and then some. Nice. All right. Well, we have made the rounds on and ended on a surprisingly good high note. Um, I want to say thank you to all my friends, Todd and Chris, for coming and hanging out with me. And when I say all my friends, that's literally all my friends. I don't have any more friends. It's a sad <laughs> existence. That's if you not pay true. people, He's are lying. they considered your friends? <laughs> Only if you Is that on a contract, dollar. Chris? Larry can call his friends. <laughs> It is. I got to look it up, though. I ha I made sure legal slipped that in there. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> thank you to everybody for coming and hanging out with us this week here. And I'd play that for a dollar powered by the World One One Podcast Network, where you can and should press start to engage your mind. And we'll see you guys all next week. Have a good one. Peace. Toodles. Later. <laughs>